Church. Morning. 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 Happy Sabbath. Morning. You know, I uh, the song I picked this morning, the first one, is the Blessed Hour of Prayer. I thought y'all do that real well. I guess, I guess you didn't know it so well. But anyways, the next time we do it, we'll do better. That's right. We know it now. Okay. I've entitled this little talk. Whose image is on you? Whose image is on you? Now, I'm going to talk about some things as we go through this that probably won't be so comfortable because in this sermon we're going to talk a bit about addiction. Addiction isn't always a very pleasant topic. But we will get there. So fasten on your seatbelt, grab your Bible, turn it into uh, Isaiah 55, beginning in verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break with peace, and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Amen. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Beginning in 56, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice. For my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, the son of the man that layeth a hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let thy son or, nor stranger that hath joined thy, himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring into my holy mountain, and to make them joyful in the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifice shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Praise the Lord. You know, in Jesus, there is love, there is victory, and there is salvation for all people. But what stands in the way? What stands in the way? So, so. Let's turn our Bibles to John. My favorite gospel. That's no secret. John 10. We're going to talk about the Good Shepherd a little bit here. John 10. Can y'all get there? Just say amen. 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 Beginning in verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he hath entered not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way. The same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter hath opened, 
and the sheep heareth his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the perfect gentleman. Okay? He's the door of doors. He said in that verse is that he is the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, but kings, brothers and sisters, kings don't open doors. People open doors for kings. When Jesus sat, stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus, do you think that Jesus could not have rolled away the stone? Of course he could have rolled away the stone. He called Lazarus forth from the dead. But what did he have people do? Roll away the stone. Hmm. How about when Jesus was laid in the tomb? An angel named Gabriel comes flying to this earth at the speed of thought, touches his foot on this planet, and it causes an earthquake. Imagine the majesty of one angel. I mean, it just, just go to stop and think about you compare that to God. It's unfathomable. What does Gabriel do? He rolls away the stone. You've got to open the door for a king. And he says, Thy father calleth thee. Jesus comes out. Victorious. He's conquered sin, death, and the devil. And this equipment, brothers and sisters, in human flesh. Praise be to God. In another scripture in John, the Bible says that I stand at the door, right? Jesus isn't going to open that door, brothers and sisters. You need to open the door for a king to come in. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But brothers and sisters, I'd like to declare to you that we like to hide behind doors of our own choosing in the form of addictions or maybe just bad habits. Low self-worth. We have people that have low self-worth or easily offended Think about this. When you have a wolf that's going after sheep, what does is, what is, what is the wolf do? Separates it from the flock. Separates, right? When they separate, then they can conquer, right? Now, if you're easily offended or you have a low self-worth, which you shouldn't have because you're a child of the king, brothers and sisters, you follow me here? You put yourself in a position outside of the flock. You got me? Yeah. And now you are in a position of easy prey. Who's the wolf going to go after? Stop and think about it. Even a pack of dumb dogs knows their strength in numbers. Do we not get that? Listen, this isn't an easy subject to talk about. You know, because each one of us have our little different problems, whatever they may be. And 
I just wanted to give a little open forum where we can begin to discuss some of these things. And this is not a complete list, but it's one of purpose, of opening the door of discussion. Maybe you have the habit, or maybe addiction, of gossip. Maybe you like to talk about other people. Maybe you just have an addiction of being in a bad mood. You're just always ticked off at the world and everybody. That's a terrible way to be. But it can be an addiction. It very much can be. How about pornography? You know, there's a lot of people today in this world hooked up into pornography because our computers can pipe it right into your home. You know, and you think nobody knows. Nobody knows. But the one who can walk through all doors, can see through all doors, is a king and a gentleman. He knows what's going on behind that door. Maybe you're an addict of work. You see my wife staring at me right now. Workaholic. You know, I gotta say guilty. I am guilty, and I, I, I've been doing better at this. But I got a ways to go. The Lord's working on it. Maybe inappropriate sex. Jesus spoke very plainly about this. You know, these TV shows we got on today is just totally unbelievable. The stuff that you can see, you just turn on a regular TV channel. Maybe you could be addicted to negativity. Maybe materialism. Maybe even legalism. Maybe you have a habit of criticizing others. These are things, brothers and sisters, that God wants to give us victory over. Amen. You know, people can be addicted to drugs. People can even be addicted to being a control freak. You've met people like that? Maybe some of you work for people like that. You know, when you speak of addictions, everybody always thinks of the number one, alcohol. Alcohol. What about ones that aren't so? Maybe coffee. Oh, I'm not addicted to coffee. Oh, no way. If you're not, then stop. I dare you. Try. If you don't think you're addicted, try to stop. You know, it took me many years to finally come to the point where the Lord was working on me in such a way that I had laid down. Because I knew it was an item in my hand. And it's finally gone. Thank God. You know, we're all born with bents and propensities. If these are not checked, they can become cultivated. Just a fancy way of saying addiction. Which lead to anger, jealousy, impatience, all hemmed in by weaknesses to my addiction. We can be free, but we must recognize the problem. What is recognizing the problem? Admitting first that there is a problem. Then we can pray. And God has God has offered us what? 
all power, hasn't he? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Isn't he all powerful? You know, when people try to conquer addictions, they're so focused on the addiction, like say cigarettes. Oh, I just gotta lay these, gotta lay these things down. Stinking cigarettes, they run my life. <laughs> right? What are you doing? You're defeated right away, aren't you? Because what's your focus? The cigarette. Throw the cigarette down, focus on Jesus Christ, and guess what happens? You're walking with Jesus, and He takes care of it. Because you know why? Because you're walking with Him, He doesn't smoke. His breath doesn't stink. And you think, man, I want to be like Him. And you know what? You just realize one day that you don't smoke anymore. And who gets the victory? Jesus gives you the victory. He gives it to you. Can I hear an amen? Pray amen. 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 God, brothers and sisters, is the answer. Let's turn our Bibles to Luke. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. We all there? Amen. Beginning in verse 20. When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come? Or look we for another? And in the same hour he cured many, and their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits. And unto many were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go ye way, go your way, and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers cleanse, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John, What went ye into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are kings and courts. But what went ye out to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. That is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. For I say unto you, among those that are born of a woman, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is of God is greater than he. Anyways, the point there being, John was discouraged, wasn't he? Jesus just said that he, of men born of a woman, there wasn't a greater prophet. He got discouraged, didn't he? He's sitting there in prison and he's saying, Are you really the Christ? Are you really the one? Or should we look for another? So if somebody like John, who Jesus said was the greatest of all prophets, can become discouraged, brothers and sisters, it's quite possible that you could come, become discouraged. But that doesn't mean that we give up hope. We continue to follow Jesus. What happened? He took his eyes off the ball. That's all that happened, right? So to speak, in a sports vernacular. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, if, if, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you can't fail. You cannot fail. There isn't an addiction. There isn't a bent, a principle. There is nothing that can stand in your way if you are focused on Jesus Christ and walking in his will. I'm telling you, if you're in the most dangerous place in the world, <coughs> and you're in the will of God, you could not be safer any place. If you are in the safest place in the world, and you are not in God's will, you are in a very dangerous, dangerous place. It's easy to become discouraged if we take our eyes off Jesus. Whose image we want on us? Right? Do you want anything more than that? 
than to have his imprint upon you? Matthew 22, beginning in verse 15. Matthew 22, beginning in 15. Y'all there? Amen. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Who are they trying to entangle? Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou of, for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Now see, this is the way the devil works. He brings in a little truth, right? And then he tries to snare it, right? Here it comes. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought him a penny. And he saith unto them, Who is the image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar. Then saith he unto them, Rather therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. You see, they were trying to, they were trying to get him. They were trying to trap him, weren't they? They throw this coin at him. Should we pay tribute to Caesar? Or shouldn't we? What does Jesus say? Yeah. Whose image is on the coin? Whose superscription? What if Jesus would have finished that thought? Stop and think about that for a minute. Whose image is on you? Whose image is on you? Render unto God what is God's. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. You know, I, I just want to speak here for a second about love. Because God is love. And we try to understand agape, okay? But we can't grasp agape. But I'm going to try today to scratch the surface of a little, of a pail that's so big you can't imagine. And let me say that I love my wife, right? I adore my wife. Now, if my wife doesn't love me back, I hurt, right? Why do I hurt? Because I'm missing something. You see? I'm missing something. Now God loves my wife more than I can even understand love. Now what happens if my wife doesn't love God? If she doesn't love God, God feels bad. God hurts. Wait a second, there's a difference. God feels bad because Susan's missing something. You follow that thought? Whole different ballgame, brothers and sisters. It's out of our ballpark. That's so foreign to our way of thinking. If you do for me, I do for you. If you love me, I love you. Right? But that's not God's love. God's love is ultimately pure and undefined. If you don't love him, he hurts because you suffer loss. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 61. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, 
to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, revivals are not preached up, but they're prayed down. Mm -hmm. Revivals are not preached up, but they're prayed down. How is your prayer life? How close are you to the Lord Jesus Christ? When you hear this subtle, soft knocking, are you opening that door? Because he's not going to open it. There's some things God just will not do. And he respects your authority to shut your door. You know, we put locks on doors to keep people from opening doors. And I don't know, I guess some people just weren't raised the way I was raised, because my mama taught me if a door was shut, then you knock on that door. You don't just walk through. You know, oftentimes people will just bust through a door and say, well, why didn't you lock it? Well, the lock is broke. Did you ever think of knocking? <laughs> Some people just weren't raised the way I was raised. It's not my deal. I don't have to get all upset with them. That's just the way it is today. We must open the door even if we are afraid of what some might see. We must open these doors. Admit the addiction. Get it out. Get it dealt with. Move on with your life. Have victory. Victory always comes through the truth. Jesus is that door, brothers and sisters. Amen. Please, won't you let him in today and stop holding on to whatever, to what you can't keep anyway, so that he can give you what you can never lose. Mm -hmm. Our closing song is 367. Rescue the parish.
Jesus and you want Him to be the Lord and Master of your life, just raise your hand. Thank you very much. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you have conquered sin, death, and the devil. You have taken back what is rightfully yours. You just not have yet come and claimed it. And we are here to represent the fact that you are the King of glory. We have come here on your appointed day to worship you and to thank you that you break all the barriers, that you cast out every foe, that you give us victory upon victory. And I praise you because we can stand together, brother and sister, hand in hand together as the body of Christ, moving as one body with you in our head. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you.